Okay, so now we are moving towards the most important part of the chapter. So if there is a numerical, most probably it will come from this part. Okay, this is an experiment which has, uh, uh, you know, completely revived the notion that uh, light can be a wave. Okay, this is Young's double-slit experiment. Now first, let us draw the experimental setup and then we will discuss it in detail. These are the two slits. Let us call them S1 and S2. Okay? These two slits are the openings on this plane. Okay? So light will come from, let us say, far and it will hit these openings and then light will come out from here and there. Getting it? And there is this screen at a distance d. At a distance d, there is a screen. And we observe the things that happens on the screen. Okay? Now, if light is a particle, then what all things you can expect? If light is a particle, light will directly come from here, move in a straight line and here it will be bright spot and here bright, bright spot. Okay? And here it should be what? Dark. Dark spot. Fine. This is how it should be. But what turns out is that this is the brightest spot. What's the size of okay. the Fine. It turns out that this is the brightest spot. Alright, which is completely against what is expected out of it. Had the light been a particle. Uh, what are you saying? So what's the size of the signal? It is a small size. It's a small size. It, it's not fixed. Okay. So here you observe complete brightness. Now other things that are given in this experiment is that this distance is small d. Distance between the slit is small d. And one more thing is given is d is very large compared to small d. Okay? This is like, uh, you know, this is how it should be if you are doing Young's capacity experiment. d has to be, capital D has to be very large compared to small d. Okay? Any doubt on this? Now, if you do not assume light to be a ray, how it should travel then from S1 and S2? Okay. Is if it is a wave, how should it go from S1 and S2? It is a point source. Point source will generate spherical wavefront. Fine. So like this, wavefront will get generated. Draw this. This is how wavefront of S1 will be there. Similarly, wavefront of S2 will travel like this. Isn't it? Like this it will travel. So the wave coming from S1 meets the wave coming from S2 at different locations. Fine. And when it meets, there will be interference happening. It will be like two waves meeting. Fine. But depending on the phase difference, it could be concept interference or destructive interference. So these two waves will meet and interference will get created. Okay. Now if you put a screen, then you will be able to see the interference pattern. Whatever happens on the screen, you will be able to see. You will not be able to see what is happening here in air. Okay, it's, it's like putting image on the screen. Then you will be able to see the image. Similarly, you have this screen over here. So whatever happens on the screen, you will be able to see it and observe it. Fine. So let us analyze this situation properly. Because right now, the situation is very messy. We have so many waves, curves, meeting. It becomes very difficult to analyze right now. Okay? So, draw this experimental setup again without the waves. Now, suppose this S1 wave travels this 
point and from H2 also it will travel to this point. Let's say this is point number B. Any doubt on this? So from S1 and S2 wave travels like this. This arrow is showing the direction of motion. If wave from here has to meet wave from there on the screen, then there is only this path. Are you getting it? Fine. And assume that there is no path difference between S1 and S2 when they have started. These are two coherent sources with zero path difference. How will you create such source to coherent sources with zero path difference? How will you create? You can, you can have one source over here. So it will generate waves and these two waves W1 and W2 they travel equal distance before reaching S1 and S2. So there is no path difference. And since it is coming from only one source, you can say it is coherent. Or you can put here sodium lamp. Monochromatic. If you take multiple wavelengths, then it becomes very difficult to conduct this experiment. You are taking only one wavelength at a time. Okay? So assume that this distance is y. What is this y? Distance of this point P from the center line is y. Okay? Now can you find out the path difference in terms of y, small d and capital D between this wave and that wave? Find out. Assume this is d1 and this will be d2. So what is d1 minus d2? L1 and L2, that is better. Find out L1 minus L2. How much? Simple Pythagoras curve waves. Now you have to do it. Should I do it? Should I do it? I mean, it's a direct application of Pythagoras theorem. I don't know what is the difficulty you guys are having. Hmm? Not getting it. No. There is a construction. This. There is 90 degree. So L1 is what? L1 is equal to root over y square y plus d by 2 whole square plus capital D square this is L1 and L2 is under root y minus d by 2 whole square plus d square ok what is there? Hmm? Here right angle triangle, na? this is a right angle triangle, this side is what? y minus d by 2, this total is d, this thing is d by 2 and this thing also d by 2. Are you able to understand now? So L1 square is y plus d by 2 whole square plus d square and L2 square is y minus d by 2 whole square plus d square so I get L2 square minus L1 square equal to what? y or let see L1 is more so I do L1 square minus L2 square this is y plus d by 2 whole square minus y minus d by 2 whole square, right? So this will be 2 times y into d. Hmm? Any doubt on this? Until as you do it, you, if you just stare at the board, you will have doubt in 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 also. You have to do it yourself. Don't just stare at the board. So L1 square minus L2 square is what? L1 plus L2 into L1 minus L2. Okay. 
One more approximation in Young's double zero experiment is y is less, y is very small. So basically, you are observing the interference pattern very near to the center line. Fine. So if it is very near to center line, what can I say about L1 plus L2? 2D. Right? I can approximately say L1 plus L2 is 2D. Okay? So L1 minus L2 become what? L1 minus L2 is 2Y D divided by 2D. So this will be Y D by D. And this is L1 minus L2. And L1 minus L2 is what? Pass difference. Any doubt? It's not a so this is the path difference. Now if path difference, if this path difference is equal to n times lambda, what will happen? What will happen at this point? If it is equal to constructive difference will happen. Right? So at location where y is equal to n lambda d by d, constructive difference will happen for values starting from 0, 1, 2 and up to whatever. Fine. So when n is equal to 0, what is the location of y? What is y? y is equal to 0 when n equal to 0. Fine. So this is maxima or minima? This is maxima, it is constructive difference. Fine. So the center point where the path difference is 0, right now, where path difference is equal to 0, this location is called central maxima. Fine. In this experiment, right now, central maxima is where? At y equal to 0. Fine. It may not be at y is equal to 0. What is the definition of central maxima? Path difference has to be equal to 0. Fine. Find out the path difference and equate it to 0. What we have found path difference as? y d by d. When you equate this to 0, you get y is equal to 0. And that happens to be when n equal to 0 also. Fine. So that is central maxima which is here. But what about n equal to 1? If you put n equal to 1, you will get point over here. Okay? And when you put n equal to minus 1, you get point over here. Is there any difference between these two points? No. It is symmetrical. Fine. So these two points are similar. We call them first maxima. One is above, one is below. First maxima. Fine. And second maxima is? n equal to 2. So central maxima is only one. First maxima, second maxima, onwards you have two. Getting it? Okay. Acha, one more thing. What if y d by d, which is a path difference, equals to n plus half times lambda? What it is? Destructive difference. So at location where y is equal to n plus half times lambda d by d, at this location, destructive difference will happen. What is destructive difference? Intensity becomes zero. So it will be, it will be dark. It will be dark. Fine. So locations where that this happens, it is dark and this location will be bright. I mean, can I say that after every dark bright will, after every dark bright will happen, after every bright dark will happen, can I say that? In between two bright, let us say y is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1, so it will be lambda d by d. So y is equal to 0 is central bright, this is first bright. What about here, when you put n equal to 0, you will get lambda d by 2d. Is this in between these two? Fine. So you have two bright fringes and then one dark fringe in between. So this alternate 
pattern. Getting it? Any doubt? 